Welcome back to the two-way report. Thanks to the recent New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin decision, the Second Amendment community has achieved yet another big win. This is a severe blow to California's anti-gun agenda. It involves dictating which guns its citizens can buy through a roster system, and although other states also have similar laws, this particular lawsuit is massive. Let's discuss it further. On the evening of March 31st, Judge Dana M. Sabra, District Court Chief Judge of the Southern District of California, which is the Ninth Circuit, issued an order that strongly struck down California's handgun roster. So, the case is Reina v. Bonta. Plaintiffs in this case wanted to purchase newer guns that are inherently safer than older generations, such as Smith & Wesson EZs, SIG P365s, Gen 4 and Gen 5 Glocks, etc., but were unable to because of California's stupid handgun roster requirements. Let's take a look at the order. I'll rephrase it for you folks who don't like lawyer speak, but I'll put a link in the description for the few scholars out there who would like to see the order. The plaintiffs here are seeking to stop California's handgun roster requirements, which have prevented the production and sale of many modern handguns that are commonly used for self-defense and other lawful purposes in the rest of the country. These requirements, which are part of California's Unsafe Handgun Act, impose strict testing and safety feature requirements that are not required in most other states, limiting the manufacturing and sale of handguns. Plaintiffs are saying that the roster's requirements have prevented the addition of any modern handguns to the list for commercial sale in California for over 10 years years. They argue that the current number of handguns on the roster is decreasing due to the mandatory safety and testing requirements as well as annual roster fees imposed on manufacturers. Moreover, plaintiffs assert that the roster will continue to shrink more quickly due to the UHA's 3 for 1 provision, which mandates that the removal of three grandfathered handguns for every new roster compliant handgun added to the list. Plaintiffs contend that the UHA's roster requirements collectively prohibit the sale of numerous modern handguns that are commonly used and violate their Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms. While they initially sought to enjoin the entire roster, their focus has been on semi automatic pistols, which are banned in California because they lack three features mandated by the UHA. The first two requirements include a chamber load indicator and magazine disconnect mechanism, both of which supposedly improve gun safety by preventing accidental discharges. The third requirement is micro-stamping, which allows law enforcement to identify the handgun used in a crime by analyzing information imprinted on spent cartridge casings. The defendants maintain that the requirements were passed by the California legislature to promote vital state interests, including firearm safety and the improvement of criminal investigations for the benefit of public safety. The debate over the permissible scope of gun regulation is highly contentious in American politics. But the court's responsibility is to assess whether the handgun roster provisions of the UHA infringe on the Second Amendment rights of the plaintiffs in accordance with the precedent established by the United States Supreme Court in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin. Bruin overturned the method known as the means and approach that circuit courts nationwide had previously used to assess the constitutionality of gun regulations under the Second Amendment. This approach was also used by the Ninth Circuit to uphold the chamber load indicator, magazine disconnect mechanism, and micro-stamping requirements of the UHA. Per Bruin, if an individual's conduct is covered by the plain text of the Second Amendment, the Constitution typically safeguards that conduct. In such cases, the state cannot merely argue that the regulation promotes a crucial interest, such as public safety. Instead, the state must establish that the regulation aligns with this country's historical traditions of firearm regulation to justify its regulation. According to the new Bruin standard, the court concludes that plaintiffs have a Second Amendment right to purchase newer models of semi-automatic handguns that are commonly used, and this right is presumptively protected. Since California can't demonstrate that the UHA's chamber load indicator, magazine disconnect mechanism, and micro-stamping requirements align with the country's historical regulations of firearms, plaintiffs are entitled to a preliminary injunction against the state's enforcement of these revisions, which currently prohibit the commercial sale of these arms. Additionally, the 3 for 1 removal provision, which depends on the enforceability of these three provisions, is also subject to the injunction. But plaintiffs have failed to show that the UHA's roster listing requirement, as well as its fees, safety device, and testing requirements violate their Second Amendment rights. As a result, plaintiffs' motion for preliminary injunction is partially granted and partially denied. So, in a nutshell, the judge is saying that California cannot enforce subsections of California Penal Code 31910 related to the chamber load indicator, the magazine disconnect mechanism, micro-stamping, and the 3 for one removal of handguns. This ruling is based on the fact that these requirements are a violation of the Second Amendment. 
It is worth noting that this is not the first time California's roster requirements have been challenged in court. In a previous case, it was revealed that law enforcement officials in California were using unsafe handguns that did not meet the state's roster requirements. This prompted many law enforcement officials to join in support of getting rid of this roster, which opened up some eyes, particularly among anti-gun advocates. However, there is also the issue of the stay pending appeal. Under Federal Rule of Several Procedures 62C, the District Court has discretion to stay enforcement of an injunction pending appeal, similar to what Judge Roger T. Benitez did with Freedom Week with the magazines. The defendants asked the court to stay enforcement pending appeal. Basically, it is saying that a stay is not guaranteed and depends on the situation. Courts consider factors such as whether the person requesting the stay has a good chance of winning their case, whether they will be hurt without the stay, whether the other party will be hurt by granting the stay, and what is in the best interest of the public. The most important factors in deciding whether to grant a stay are the first two. Although plaintiffs have a good chance of winning and the defendants won't suffer irreparable harm without a stay, the court believes that an orderly process is in the best interest of everyone involved. The UHA has been preventing the commercial sale of the handguns in question for over a decade, and this lawsuit has been going on since November 10, 2020, with the parties proceeding at a slow pace. The arrival of the Bruin decision does not change the previous pace of this litigation and does not have to hasten it. Furthermore, the District Court in Boland has recently prevented the enforcement of the CLI, MDM, and micro-stamping provisions. In another case called Boland, the court put a hold on enforcing the injunction for two weeks while the state decided whether to appeal. The state has now filed an emergency motion for a partial stay while the appeal is ongoing. After a status conference on March 22, 2023, this court decided to issue its decision in this case, but will wait to enforce it until after the appeal or further hearing. Both parties wanted a decision from the court since this case was filed first and presents different issues than the Boland case. Let's now go to the conclusion in the order, which is on the last page of the order. It says, For these reasons, the court hereby orders. 1. Plaintiff's motion for a preliminary injunction is granted as to the subsections of California Penal Code 31910 in relation to the chamber load indicator, the magazine disconnect mechanism, micro stamping, and the 3 for 1 removal provisions. 2. Plaintiff's motion for a preliminary injunction is denied as to the other alleged provisions of the UHA. This refers to the fees and other requirements imposed by California on gun manufacturers, among other things. 3. Defendants are enjoined from enforcing subsections of California Penal Code 31910 related to the chamber load indicator, the magazine disconnect mechanism, micro stamping, and the 3 for 1 removal provisions. 4. Posting of bond is waived. And 5. The preliminary injunction is stay pending appeal or further hearing on this matter, whichever comes first. So this is some really good news for us all in the Second Amendment community. Another court case has ruled that California's handgun restrictions on safety features violate the Constitution. This is the second such ruling in just two weeks, which is very promising for our friends and families in California who want to see changes to the handgun roster system. And that's all the time we have for today. If you care about your rights under the Second Amendment, please help our channel grow by clicking on like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest news surrounding the Second Amendment. Thanks and have a good one.